<sighs> yeah, no, I, I, that part I know. That part I know. Ah, all right. There we go. Now you all hear me on YouTube. You all. Yeah, I know they do because now I'm remembering how to be a person. All right. I finished my baby bell. Thank God I have two. Welcome to Summer Sessions. I am Annie Slug, and this is a Gouda Baby Bell Cheese, and I'm going to give my intro while I open it. This was not planned. I did not bring a second one for take two. I am hungry, and this is called Consistency. New Grand Summer Sessions is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Um, if you were here from Winterfest and from the previous Summerfest, welcome back. As you can see, I have a new name, Annie Slug. And we're going to go over that today. <sighs> How's everyone doing? Good? Oh, general chat. Good. There's two of them. Good. Today's lecture is about shifting perspective and consciousness through new grounds. An Annie Slug lecture. Now, that's a complicated name. What am I going to go over? What am I going to talk about? Now, if you've been to my lectures before, you know that I talk about mind, body, and your skills. In the last summer session, I went on a long-winded... Uh, very compact talk about the mind, the proclivities of artists, and how to cor shift and correct your course. In the winter, I gave you a concrete do's and don'ts for marketing yourself as an artistic, artistic professional. We are back to the summer. I have decided that for the summer, I will be talking more introspectively. And for the winters, I will be talking more externally, more concrete, less theory. If you do not know who I am, I am Annie Slug. I am Anthony. I am a artist. Uh, we're going to go over that later. Actually, you know what? Let's go to the next slide. Who is Annie Slug? I'm an artist. We will go over that vagueness later on. But my name is Anthony. My friends call me Tony. Stan calls me Tone. And Big Tone. And what I feel my job is for you guys, my, my duty to you all, to Newgrounds as a whole, is to... Grab your uh, collective uh, bullhorns and reel you in because you guys are one crazy bunch and I couldn't think of a better group of people to hang out with. But when you have all that chaotic energy, someone has to take, it, take one for the team and bring it back down the center. And today is going to be a more focused more focused lecture. I'm not going to be as scattered as I was last summer, as all over the place. I actually re-listened to uh, most of it. I can't listen to myself talk for that long. Uh, but listened to like about like 45 minutes of it when I was at work today. And there's some things that I'd, I'd like to change. And there's things I'd like to actually address now. Uh... Everything I say on an introspective level that might involve... Ooh, the burping will never change. I'm a burper. Anything I talk about on an introspective level that might involve mental health, um, social science, things like that. This is from a non-clinical standpoint. I am not a clinical professional. I am not a... Well, I am a 
EMT, but I'm not a mental health professional. I am not a um, medical, I'm not a, you know, practitioner, all right? Take my words with a grain of salt, but if they relate to you, good, and run with that, because nothing I will say will, incur, you know, cause any harm. There's no harm in trying, right? So, what are we here for today? Shifting your perspective and your consciousness through new grounds. What does that mean? Well, it's first, since not everybody here is in the Discord, yes, but not everybody here watching on YouTube is a new grounds member. Let's go over what is new grounds. Everything by everyone. Community supported. Community moderated. No integrated economy. We'll go over that in a second. And has mainly internal value. I know some of you are taking notes. Newgrounds has mainly internal value. We will go over what that means later on. I'm actually going to go back to questions. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, panel questions, if you are in the Discord, is open. Uh, hop in there and ask what you'd like. But we are going to have a designated Q&A for the end. Um, and before I continue, I'd like to say thank you to Stan for handling my stupidity and my, um, huh, you know, artists, they're difficult. But we get there. That's show business, baby. Show must go on. All right. Everything by everyone. You guys know what that means. Anything that you can come up with, there is a place on the portal for you. That isn't a random YouTube video. If you have a, a art directive, there's a place for you to share it on Newgrounds. That's big. Community supported. It is, it is funded by the community and by the community using it. That is it. Community moderated. Everybody gets blamed at one point. No integrated economy. There is no integrated financial gain for being a Newgrounds user and posting regularly to Newgrounds. Yes, there are outliers. Yes, you can go on your account and link your, your coffee and your Patreon. But there is no integrated new ground system into making money, as far as I know of. And if it is, it is obviously not so impactful that I would have forgotten it. There might be a donation button now. I don't know. Now, mainly internal value. Let's go on to that. Oh, that's Discord. Internal versus external value. Internal value is your spirituality, your self-esteem, your personal development, how you're growing as a person, the amount that you actually like yourself, being honest, and being disciplined. External value is your social face, your relationships, and any material gain or material want. Now, I know those definitions seem, one seems more ham-fisted than the other. You know, especially using buzzwords like self-esteem and personal development. Uh, that is only because there's only so many ways to ex uh, describe external value. It's just it's your, it's your social life, your relationships, your more interpersonal relationships, how people see you, and any type of external gain. There's only status and, you know, it's stuff. All right? There's internal value systems. And there are external value systems. These are morally neutral. And they have both have different places in our creative zeitgeist. All right? Now let's start to talk about social media, as I love to do. Because, listen, Newgrounds in and of itself is a forum. But it's also a type of social media. Don't look at the WhatsApp there. I don't know. How social media feeds external value systems. Likes are perceived as, valid as validation. Views are seen as acknowledgement. There is an instant gratification. And social media is your dopamine drug dealer. We're going to talk about dopamine a lot today. Let's go over the first two. Likes are perceived as validation. And views are seen as acknowledgement. We'd be lying to ourselves if we said we have an at least 10... 20 times, maybe 15 to 20 percent of the time, uh, within the first five or 10 minutes of posting something on social media, 
you go and check your notifications. Doesn't matter how many followers you have, you go and check your notifications. You're like, oh, did someone, did someone see it? You know, did someone see it? Did someone see the thing I just poured my heart, sweat, and tears into? Because that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that validation, that gratification, that dopamine hit of, ah, someone saw it. Someone saw my work. Finally. This is what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Someone saw my work. Someone liked it. Views are seen as acknowledgement. Well, I did spend 40 hours on a YouTube video and, you know, I got 100 views, but, you know, god damn it, you know, freaking, I don't know, PewDiePie puts out a video of him looking at memes that probably took him, well, not even an hour to edit, he probably has an editor, and he gets millions of views. How am I going to, how am I going to compete with one of the most subscribed channels on the internet? The instant gratification. This is outside the posting. Social media. The you're scrolling, you're getting new content, getting new content, get, get new content, hitting that, hitting that dopamine. All right, you're flooding your brain. You're becoming a dopamine addict. All of you are dopamine addicts. I promise you. Because if you're watching this right now, you have the devices that that allow the enabling. Um, so am I. So am I. I'm not being a hypocrite here. I I, I would never. I detest hypocrisy, but. I am using my lived experience to tell you to be honest with ourselves, all right? That's what we do here at, at Annie Slug University, all right? That's what we do here. We be honest with ourselves. We like that instant gratification. We like going on TikTok. We like going on Instagram. You're going to bed, and you're like, all right, time to go to sleep. I'm so tired. I have to get up in the morning. And you're resting that double chin, and you just start... Uh, 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 uh. All right, I know I sound like a boomer, and trust me, I love social media. It allows me to talk to you guys, but it has its place. All right, and this is coming from somebody that, if you don't know already, I do social media marketing for a living. That's my day job. All right, that's what that's what pays the bills. I live on social media. I know its ins and outs, and I'm telling you, as someone that lives with it, it is. Not there for your, it's not there for you. It's there for the people that own it. All right. Take that as my tinfoil hat uh, message for the day. All right. Is your dopamine drug dealer. Let's go on to the next part. How our economy feeds external value systems. All right. I'm going to put our in quotations because not all of you are from the US of A, but. If you live in a developed country, um, or even partially developed country, you probably have some, somewhat of a capitalist society. And I am not about to go on some tirade about capitalism. The reason why I bring it up is because it is a consumption-based model. All right, you you get you get money, you buy stuff. It's a market. It's a market model. All right. And why does it feed external value systems? Because it is an external value system. You need stuff. All right? You need stuff. You need stuff. What's wrong with needing stuff? Everyone needs stuff. I get it. I have stuff. I have two monitors in front of me. You see a giant bed behind me. I just ate baby belt cheese. I didn't make that baby belt cheese. I didn't sit there with my my little babushka head and churned. You like that gif? Churned my uh my my uh cheese or however the hell you Make cheese. I gotta look that up now. I gotta watch a Skillshare video on how to make cheese. I'm not gonna sleep tonight. All right. I bought it from the store with, like this guy has, money. All right. Dinero, clams, some moas. All right. It's very, I, I, there's no more explanation needed than that. All right. We're speeding through here, but this is where we're gonna get to the fun part. Artists in an economy. You are animators, you are painters, you are designers, you are filmmakers, you are game developers, you are musicians, you are audio techs, etc., etc., etc. When you are an artist in an economy, you make things to be consumed. That is your, that is how society, Suskidi, that's how society paints you. All right, that's what the external value systems set up in your brain. That you are made to make things that are meant for consumption, which is true. It is true. This is not me sitting here being like, 
You should be making a painting and then going out to your backyard and dousing it with gasoline and lighting it on fire because you got all you needed out of it. You made it. All right? I'm not a psychopath. Well, I'm trying to lay out in plain terms what we're getting at here. Everything is made for consumption. When things are consumed, there is some kind of... In most places, except one place, the place we're talking about today, when, when you can consume something, you have to pay for it. Whether it be a view, whether it be a like, whether it be a subscription, whether it be all three, you share it with your friends on Facebook, who then share it with their friends, and then they watch it with their eyeballs. Eyeballs are money, all right? Especially in an, in an in a advertisement economy, all right? Money is in the ads, like Mad Men style, all right? If you are an artist... In an economy, you're you're a you're a working artist. You make things to be consumed. All right. With all that in mind, what this does to the artist, and this is we're going to slow down a little bit. We're going to talk. Your value is based on how your work is consumed. Your value is based on how your work is consumed. No matter how much you want to tell yourself that I only do this for me, oh, I do it because it's fun, or I do X, Y, and Z, I have my reasons, all right? You are nine times out of ten going onto social media and be like, oh, what, 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 did someone repost my thing on Twitter? What, what did this person say? Oh, oh my God, did you see so-and-so reposted my thing? Oh, see how many likes I got? See how many views I got? This is great. That's awesome. But what happens is when you don't get that stuff, that's when we start to get into trouble. When you're not an instant hit, when you're not you're not raking in the instant gratification of that you're used to on social media, you're sitting there with your with your fucking phone and you're like, "Why isn't anyone seeing it?" Oh, the algorithm. Oh. Uh, no one, no one, uh, God, everyone watches this, and you start getting angry, you start getting frustrated, you're like, oh, oh my God, oh, everyone watches this crap, this, 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 this ASMR mukbang shit, and I, I'm, I'm making art, I'm an artist, why is, why is nobody watching my shit? And you're sitting, you freak out, and you fester in it, and you, you fucking lose your mind, and you're like, how is, someone just put a gif of, of Nicado Avocado, how the hell is Nicado Avocado getting, Living in a nine $9 million dollar penthouse in like Manhattan or some shit or Los Angeles or something, all right? A nine million dollar penthouse. You're losing your fucking mind, and you're like, how? How? What, what do I have to do? I guess it's useless. I guess it's useless. Fuck being an artist. Why the hell do I even bother? No one's gonna see my shit. The reason why you think that way is because you have an innate. And everyone does. We're human beings. We want things. All right? You have an innate external value system. Because the world tells you, and not by some weird, like, the eh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about just how we interact with each other. How we interact with each other. Are you hustling? Are you grinding? Are you, oh, you're an artist? You're not a, you're not working a, a trade job? Oh, you don't have another job to cover it? What are you, what are you doing? Are you, are you going to art school? Are you going to art school? Why are you going to art school for? What, what, what is that going to do for you? <laughs> and you get, you get, you're like, oh no no no, oh, I'm working, bro. No, I'm a, I'm going to do commissions, bro. No no no, I'm going to do, I'm I'm going to do uh, a freelance, dude. I, I I promise. No 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 no, man, I'm going to fucking listen. The internal value system. You're in control. External value systems are completely outside your control. Internal value system, it's all in here. Your spirituality, your self-worth, your discipline, your drive. You know, we stay hungry, we devour. Put in the work, put in the hours. External value is outside your control. Anything that is external, that is out, that is a... That is a a like, a view, money, a promotion, a car, a house, a girlfriend, a, a boyfriend, a, a good relationship with somebody. No matter what you do, 
there's always someone else involved in that. There's always someone else outside your control involved in that. You have no control over that. Right? As I said, this is about shifting your perspective and consciousness through new grounds. Not as an artist. I'm going to put it into the mind of artists because you guys are artists. But this is about everything. It's about how you go through your life. Oh, I need enough money to do this. Oh, I need enough views. If I get enough views, I'll get sponsored. If I get enough sponsors, then I can do... You'll have... You'll, you, a life of want is a life of suffering. I promise you. I'm telling you this. Look into my eyes. This is somebody who's been through it. I'm, I, I go through it, and I do the mental gymnastics, and I, I learn this shit because I want to tell you because I know... You deserve the best, all right? You deserve the best, and it is my duty to tell you that no matter, if as long as your value system remains mainly external, there are there are there are importance. We are especially the the social part. We are we are, uh, we are, uh, you know, social animals. We're social chimps. We gotta talk to each other, all right? It's the whole reason why we have community here on Newgrounds, all right? Community part's important, but it's why you're it's why you're existing in that community. What is your goal inside that community? Are you trying to get something out of somebody? And you might not even know it. I'm not even saying that in a um in a uh like it's it's I'm not I'm not putting any moral negativity on there. I'm not I'm not calling you a bad person because you want these things. It's not what I'm saying at all. Is uh, uh, value systems in most people there are people that are greedy and blah, blah, you know that that know it and don't care. But it's outside your control. All right. And we t we're told that we want these things. We're told that we want these things, and we're told that if I d if I don't have these things. Well, I have no value. I'm told if I do not have these things, I have no value. If I don't reach a thousand views on my Twitch by the end of the year, who the fuck am I? What kind of thought process is that, right? Because you have no control over that. You could do the best marketing in the world. You can be the best marketer in the whole world you'd have the best product you could be the funniest fucking streamer on twitch you could be the you could be the best artist on instagram you could be pumping out just god tier max theory like sigma brain crazy art you're just you're just on another fucking plane of existence and there is a chance that no one will ever see it so what do we do with that all right, what do we do? Because it sounds simple. It sounds simple. Just go, oh, okay, I won't want those things anymore. It's not how we work. We're very hard. We're, we're creatures of habit. We're hardwired. All right, it's, it's very hard to make those changes. But, but what does this mean for you? Where do we go from here? Step one. Step one. Developing an internal value system. How do we do that? Well, that's the semi-simple description part where it's, through time and through uh, a a dedication to that mindset that, you know, and it, it might even require fucking therapy, to be honest. Uh, you, depending how, how ingrained it is in your your day-to-day, -day, uh, you want to start going, I'm going to, you know, here's what I suggest you do. I'm actually going to go off script for a second. Here's what I suggest you do. If you're an artist, draw something, put your heart and soul into it, and put a really good drawing, and put it in a file on your computer or in a folder at home, and leave it for a month, and then post it. 30 days. 30 days. All right? If you're, if you're a, a musician, finish a, a song... And keep it in a keep that multi track uh, mastered and ready to go, and leave it for a month. Don't don't show it. All right. Let let yourself sit. Let yourself sit in your accomplishment. All right. That's that's the instant gratification part. When you make it, and while you're making it, 
You'll, and I, I want you to do. I want you to do this mental exercise next time you're drawing, next time you're making music, next time you're filmmaking, editing, whatever, whatever your, um, uh, whatever your, your vices, your creative vices. I want you to pay close attention to how you're thinking while you're doing it, and pay attention how many times you think about how people are gonna like it, how people are, um, oh, how many likes this is gonna get. Oh man, this one's gonna be a good one. You know. You know, this is this is the um, uh, a good example of this of this inter of this external value system uh, system is for my winter session. I was talking about fan art and the fan art trap. Why are you drawing fan art? Are you a really really big Zelda fan, or do you know people just like Zelda? Now I said in that same one, if you're trying to build a business, that's different. You're trying to make a living for yourself. All right. I get it. It's the hustle. We can't. We can't deny. No matter how much we want to make a. You know, I, I'm a total fucking hippie. But no matter how much we want to act like money is evil and I, I'm, I'm here with you. You still need. You still need stuff to live. If you live in these particular countries, you need stuff to live. All right. Do not. It is morally neutral to do stuff to get your business going as long as you don't hurt anybody else. All right. So I, I get it. But really, ask yourself why you're doing it. All right. If you're if you're just some random artist on Twitter, you are a random artist on Newgrounds, and you just make uh, fan art, you're probably doing it because people like it, and it'll give you views, and it'll give you fans, and it'll give you subscribers, and people will talk to you, and you'll be popular, you'll be famous. All right, that's external. All right, and in the long run, that won't change anything in here, because what's going to happen is you're going to get it, you're going to get the you know the I was talking this perspective of Newgrounds, the famed thousand fan, the one K mark, when you stop being numbers and you go to one and then a letter. All right, it's a big, big moment for everybody when you do get there, the one K. Um, digit, you know, why are they there? Why are those a thousand people there? Because of your art, or because you draw, um, I don't know, whatever you draw that you might not like. All right, keep that in mind. Step two. Let's take, actually take a breather for a second. How's everyone doing? All right, guys? How's everyone doing? Any questions so far? Man. I'm going to take a breather there for a second. Oh, what a day. What a day. All right. Step two. Cutting back on the dopamine. Now this is a straightforward one. This is this is something that I've done. This is something that I currently do, and I will show you my phone. All right, I'll show you my phone. The only one I got is Snapchat because that's how I talk to my girlfriend, and I got Pinterest because I use it for work. All right, these are my these are my apps. Oh, and I got Messenger because I use that to talk to my friends. I got no social media on my phone. I'm a social media manager, and I have no social media on my phone. Why? Because I needed to take a break from the dopamine. I am Anthony, and I, well, it's not even doxing myself. Everyone knows my last name. I have it on my account, I think. My name is Anthony Prevet, and I am a dopamine addict. Hi, Anthony. Dopamine is the number one drug in this country besides caffeine. All right? Dopamine is the number one drug in this country besides caffeine and it is the most profitable and sadly it is the one you get you get um uh, a tolerance to the quickest you could always consume more caffeine it's really hard to consume dopamine um you uh and uh, by the way i turned off this is not a permanent solution from i see some of you people saying oh god i'm still on this on the social media I, I, you guys literally see me post to Twitter, I, but I, I use my browser. I'm an old man. I'm a boomer, like I said. Um, I'm not a boomer. I'm 24, but um, I use I use on browser for work. Uh, but um, I still I still use it because I can walk away from my computer when I when I leave my house. I'm not at my computer anymore. I can't I can't look at it. But when I come home, I'm here. I'm sitting. I'm, I'm looking at my look at my I'm looking at my fucking Twitter. All right. I want to talk to you guys. All right. There there's like I said, there are external value things that are okay I, I like community i love community is why i'm here is why i'm doing this but some of you are scrolling on this thing when you go to bed 
Some of you are uh, for hours. Some of you are scrolling on it while you're at work. Some of you are scrolling on it while you're taking a shit. Some of you scroll on it while you're taking a shower. You can't have any silence. You lose your fucking mind if there's any silence. All right? And I'm the same way. I hear you. I hear you. I'm a dopamine addict. I just admitted it. All right? I can't go back from that. How do you take a dopamine detox? Right? And you'll see you'll see this um, pop up on, uh, like, you'll see, like, a BuzzFeed article or a whatever article, uh, Wall Street Journal article, but, like, how dopamine detox is, like, not real or... It is very much real, not because of some chemical thing that I'm going to explain and act like I'm a pseudoscientist. It is because it is a habit forming thing. It is a habit. All right. Habits are tangible. You can you can you can record them because if you're not doing the habit anymore, you're not doing the habit anymore and you have no urge to do the habit anymore. It's like it's like when you cut out a carb or a fat or cut out cut out sugar. All right. I I, I used to I used to be on um, I used to be on the keto diet when I was losing weight uh, the first time. And I tell you, and I promise you, after a week and a half, I did not want sugar and I did not want bread. And to this day, I really don't really eat sugar that much. Um, And uh, I think my girlfriend's watching and if she's on YouTube, she can she can hop in there and say uh, my mouth explodes when I eat like strawberries or fruits and stuff because I don't I don't eat a lot of sugar anymore. Right. I broke that habit. All right. Now, this is all because I'm I like I like uh breads and fats and i eat a lot of carbs um and cheese a lot of cheese a lot of dairy dairy is heavy on the calories um then you know uh but this is important because we're actually going to talk about that later about about you know practicing what you preach i told stan i was a little late today because i was busy practicing what i preach and will come up later so how do you take that dopamine detox delete the social media off your phone just delete it for a week. Can you handle a week? Some people can't. And it's okay if you can't. We're going to talk about it in a second. Delete the social media off your phone. Don't listen to the music for a week. Don't watch TV. Don't watch YouTube videos. This is a week. Only a week. Week of your life. And the only thing you can do. Is read. And... If you're listening to a podcast or something, it's got to be informational. Um, but you can read fiction books, and you know, but it's got to be informational. And take, go outside, go in the nature, touch some, touch some grass. Thank you, Mina. Touch some grass. Uh, but in actuality, I want you to turn it and work on your work on your art. Work on your art. You can't post it anywhere, right? You can't post it anywhere. You delete it all your social media. And you got to have some self-discipline to not use the browser. But work on your art. Work on your music. And just draw. Because what you're going to have to do is remember when you're done, uh, when you're done, uh, you can't post it anywhere. Uh, sorry, I got a little sidetracked here. I see um, how said I literally can't stop listening to music. I play out an orchestra. There's a difference. Your brain, when doing different things, is using different parts of your brain. If you do music for your art, like I just said, your art, do that. If I if I do, you know, so I do social media for a living. You know, I still have to go on social media, but it's what I'm doing on social media. I'm posting and leaving. Posting and leaving. Checking to make sure there was any mess DM messages for my for my work leaving all right you work on your music cool don't put on something you're not working on all right that's the difference because you're using different parts of your brain and you're what you're doing is the only dopamine you're getting is from getting from the thing that you you like all right your work all right we're not we're not artists because it's going to make you uh um, you know bitcoin rich all right you're you're an artist because you like art at one point you were a kid and you were doing something. You were doodling. You were making beats. You're one of those kids in school that would do the the you know the the pen the pen beats. All right. You know. I don't know if that's you know not your generation, but whatever. All right. You're doing something. Like, Man, I like art. Oh God, I just love art. All right. My teacher would throw away my drawings. Fuck that teacher. And that is why I'm becoming a teacher. That's why I'm getting my master's and my doctorate. And I will make sure that I will 
beat the fuck out of any teacher that throws away a drawing. That is that is that is despicable. That is despicable. I don't care how old you are. I do not like it. I can go to rant about that, but I'm gonna ignore it. Um don't let anyone ever dampen your creativity. That is some that 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 is disrespect. They might as well piss on your fucking shoes. Anyway. Cut back on that on that dopamine. What's gonna happen? You're going to start only doing things for yourself, and you're going to be doing a lot of self-enriching activities. Reading is good. It's good for your brain. It stops Alzheimer's, all right? You, you are going to learn more. You're going to be consuming more positive information that isn't brain-numbing. I think TV and movies are actually good consumption. I think video games are good consumption. I actually do. Um, but they are dopamine, so that's, that's a thing. What is brain-numbing is is social media social media is literally brain numbing it is bad it is bad for you it is a bad thing for society and for the community at large um i do not like social media i like forums and i like chat rooms and i like being able to talk to people and share images that way personally dm wise but um i it just because what's going to happen is you're going to delete it and you're not going to look back you're not going to look back i promise you once you go through that detox you're not going to look back all right Step three, forget about external value. This is the hard part, all right? This is the hard part. <sighs> the funny thing about doing these is that um, I, uh... oh, also another dopamine thing. Don't, don't check your phone in the morning. Put your phone, get up in the morning, go to bed when you turn, you have to turn off your phone. Turn off your phone when you go to bed and put it across the room. And put it face down. And put it somewhere you're not necessarily going to look for it in the morning. Um, and if you need your phone for actual living purposes, don't do that. You know what I mean. Or work within the nuance of your situation. But you understand the idea I'm going for. All right? Um, morning phone is the worst. Because you think you get up early enough and all of a sudden you're on TikTok for 10 minutes. And that's 10 minutes you could have been in the shower or making yourself a nice healthy breakfast. Oh, my God. The best part about a dopamine detox is that when you're not looking at your phone... You actually make yourself breakfast. You're like, oh, I can't eat healthy. I can't eat healthy. There's no time in the day. You know how much time? Go on your go on your phone right now. Fuck fuck my stream. Go on your phone right now. Look at your screen time for the day. That's all. That at least thirty percent of that is bullshit. At least thirty percent of that is bullshit, and that is time you could have spent. Uh, you could have spent doing literally anything else. You could have been doing some fucking push-ups or 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 a squat or. Went outside for a walk or made yourself a healthy breakfast or talk to your family. Not everyone likes your, like, likes their family. I kind of like my family. Um, you could have talked to your friends. Um, you could be building relationships with coworkers. Um, that's another funny thing. Um, if you're at work, if you're old enough to have a job, go to work. Pay attention while you're doing your detox. How many people in a meeting are like this before the meeting starts? Oh, oh. I think Chris is late. Oh, all right. Oh, Chris is here. Okay. You make way more connections by talking to your coworkers. It makes a healthier work environment. It makes a healthier community. You'll learn something. I'll tell you something that I learned from a coworker today because I wasn't on my phone. He was fiddling around with a book. Um, he was organizing some books on a shelf, and I said, "Oh, hey, what you know? What books do you got? Because I have books on my on my desk as well at work. Um, I work in a college." Um, and I ended up finding out he's a published author, published, published author. We ended up talking about his book. Now I have his book. All right. Check out The Gasp it's by Michael Prywis. Um, and uh, he's a good man. Very good man and a mentor. Love that man. All right. And I learned something new. I learned that my coworker is a published author, you know, and a lot of the people I work with are very accomplished. They're all older than me and they work in an art school. So, they're, you know, they're kind of just bored after being successful their whole life. But. That's something I wouldn't have known if I didn't ask, all right? Because he's not going to talk about it. He's a humble man, all right? <sighs> so that was the extension. I should have went back to this slide. Um, <laughs> step three, forget about external value, all right? This is after doing those two, I would say you're about half of the way there. I know it's only three steps. Well, I just spoiled it. Only three steps. Um, you're half of the way there. What do you do now? You've kind of, at this point, maybe kicked 
the phone habit. All right? If you're talking to people, maybe you're eating breakfast. If you could pick any meal during the day, it's breakfast. Any meal during the day, it's breakfast to make it high calorie. All right? High calorie of good foods. Um, I do rice and eggs. I do rice and eggs with um, uh, tomato salsa on the side. It's very good. Um, it might sound a little gross. It might sound like a food crime, but it's actually very good. It's basically fried rice and salsa. Uh, and you start going, hey, you know what? I don't care what other people think. I'm going to try it today to uh, act like um, no one, no one, ca I don't care what people think. I'm going to walk the way I want. I'm going to talk with confidence. I'm going to be honest. All right. Because what, what developing an internal value system does, remember what we said, honesty is, was in that list. All right. Can I, oh, 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 oh. We're going to go back to this slide. Your spirituality. We went over that in the in the first one. If you guys want me to hear talk, 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 hear me talk about spirituality in a non-religious, me telling you shit way, go listen to last summer. All right? Your self-esteem. You're going to start getting rid of that sh fucking struggle, that, 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 that shrug, all right? Your personal development. You're going to start reading more. You're going to start consuming more. All right? You wonder why I got so smart? I read. I read. I read books. All right? Um, I didn't. I didn't grow this massive head, um, and these uh, boyish good looks by not reading. All right, I read. All right. Hey, you're growing as a person. The amount of the amount that you actually like yourself. When you start to develop an internal value system, everything you do, is for you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Here in my garage. Knowledge. Knowledge. I didn't hear. I'm here with my, my messy room, and my bookshelves over there. You can't even see it. Um. But yeah. Uh, how much you actually like yourself? Are you are you proud of how you're spending your day? Because I promise you, during dopamine withdrawal, you feel like a piece of shit. You start to develop depression, so the non non clinical depression, not things that's an actual chemical imbalance in your brain, and you're fucking yourself up. All right, once again, nuances, people. Um. All right, and you start trying to build these walls. All right, because I'm actually feeling that too, and we're going to talk about that later. Start building these walls around, you know, start doing surface level things to act like you're changing yourself. But in actuality, it's all towards some external social face or external gain. Or if you want other people to like you, you want you want something out of it that doesn't involve in here. Things that are outside your control. And being honest, I promise you, once you develop a pure and true internal value system that you do stuff for you, you'll start being a way honest person. Honest with yourself, honest with others, honest with your actions. And it's freeing. Honesty is freedom. All right. And being disciplined, being driven. All right. We're going to talk about the driven part in a, in a bit. Let's go back to where we were. All right. All right. Now, with all this in mind, how's everyone doing? Everyone taking it in? Stop real quick for a panel question. Oh, you know what? Some of these are. Okay, you answer later. Okay, so I'm gonna answer those later. I'm gonna take your word for it. I'm gonna answer those later. All right. Why do we? Ah, why is this important for artists? And how is this going to shift your perspective? And what do I want to shift your perspective to? Because obviously I'm preaching here. I'm on a soapbox. I've been screaming and yelling like Alex Jones style at you for the last. Well, can you say his name on YouTube? Um, about uh, some crazy person's uh, you know, uh, yelling. All right, like a ramble, rambler. Why am I doing this? Why is all this important? I mean this with the most sincerity and genuine whatever. All right? I am very serious when I say this. Artists are the ambassadors of humanity. That sounds like some Star Trek shit, but I mean it. And this is the reason why I do what I do for a living. All right, this is my duty to... This is, this is philanthropy right now. All right, for the good of for love of humans of humanity. Artists are the ambassador of humanity. Your contribution to it is beyond movies, video games, and comic books. Entertainment is amazing, and it is like I said in previous lectures. It is the most important thing next to food, water, and shelter. All right, entertainment is important, and it's the reason why we've had games all the way back to fucking cavemen. All right. Entertainment is important, and your job 
at the very level is as an artist is so important because you're keeping you're keeping people fucking sane in this crazy goddamn world all right and and like um stoners like me like to say the the flo the giant million miles per hour rock flying through space in the in a goddamn shooting gallery all right that, that's the you know, you're keeping people sane all right you're keeping the, you're keeping them down but you're also challenging them your perspective shapes the perspective of your community there's a reason why people ban and burn books, all right? An artist's words and their perspective can change fucking history. And I'm not saying this in some motivational speaker thing saying all of you are going to change the fucking world. Some of you won't. And that's the whole point of not having an external value system. Some of you will just be artists, and that is okay. I probably won't amount to anything outside of Newgrounds, but I love Newgrounds, and this is my home, and I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm satisfied with that. I'm, I'm elated with that. All right. I can't sit here and be like, Oh God, but I'm not, I'm not the Tony Robbins of art. And Tony Robbins, actually, you, you don't want to be like Tony Robbins. Uh, the, I can't think of another, I, um, you know what I mean? All right. I can't sit here and be like that. That's crazy. It's outside my control. How can I base my value on that? All right. But what's important is that the people around you are shift are shaped by your perspective, your perspective. If you're a grind set, Sigma, Sigma grind set, art is my grind, I'm sitting here making NFTs, and I'm selling t-shirts that are fan art, and I'm making stickers, and going my, you know, that's well and good, minus the NFT part, I'll be straight up, uh, but there has to be a, that should only be because you have to make money, not because that is your value, that is your value as an artist. Media is power and it is your voice. Do not limit it to how others receive it. Who cares if no one sees your video, your animation, all right? Who cares if no one ever invites you onto a talk show like, man, you're, a, you're the next fucking Picasso. How did you... Uh, any slug, rap, rap our feeble little might amoeba brains around your fucking genius i'll gladly do it it's not gonna happen that is not gonna happen it is not gonna happen all right and it doesn't matter if it doesn't happen even if it does happen and i and i say this, this is actually i didn't finish my sentence before i'm in such a rant um you're the reason why i say this because some of you actually are gonna do that some of you are gonna be at that level some of you are gonna be at that level and it is my duty as your teacher, as your mentor, as your educator, to instill some values in you, to in, to to instill some, to 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 it is it, it is it is my duty as a, as an educator. That's our point. That's why teachers are so important. That's why you should respect your teachers when they are respectable, when they are doing when they have your your best interest in mind as an individual. All right. I want you to soar through this world because. You deserve it, not because everyone else deserves to see it. All right, you hear me? I want you to soar through this world because your perspective shapes your community. You are the ambassador of humanity. When everything is dead and gone, when they, when we fucking blow ourselves up in in, in a nuclear holocaust, and the aliens show up and they're like, "Look at this desert Mars too," and they, see, you know what they're gonna find? They're gonna find your art, and they're gonna find our buildings. Buildings are art. They're gonna find books hopefully in the rubble that's art all right you're the ambassadors of humanity that's some star trek shit but that's the intensity that i think about it because art is affecting us now advertise advertisements affect us every single day all right your the media you watch obviously affects you every single day all right that is it shifts your mind shifts your perspective me right now in this little this little box is me media shifting your perspective because no matter what my voices are going into your fucking ears and you can't change that all right that's how important this is that's why i get so heated and i get so excited nothing else in this world excites me like this all right i don't i don't talk with this much passion about anything else it's important all right so where do you do this where do you gather all where do you take all of this all of this information and where do you put it new grounds why? Why do we use Newgrounds? Why am I so fucking obsessed with Newgrounds? All right? I'm going to tell you why after I take a sip.
I lied. Two sips. It's really good. Because new ground, new grounds has there is no other reason to participate in new grounds unless you are interested in community, meeting new friends, and just sharing your art with like-minded people and forming a community. There are outliers, obviously, people that we know. I don't have to say, I don't have to name drop that have gotten fame outside of Newgrounds or has used Newgrounds as a launching off point. And that is another purpose because as a community, we support each other and we support each other's art. I, I go through the art portal at least once a week. All right. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I portal patrol. All right. I'll go to the animation portal. I'll go to the music portal, the audio portal, go on the audio portal. Look at me. Look at me. My, my fucking beady eyes, my, my beady Sicilian eyes go on the audio portal. Anyway, you're not there for likes. You're not there for that instant gratification. You're not there because you you're not going to get it there, all right? And you use new grounds as your jumping off point because this panel is proof enough. The amount of people that are in here are proof enough that what I'm saying is correct, at least about the new grounds part, all right? You know, but I'll speak with confidence. I'm a badass motherfucker. I, I research my shit. I am right. This is important, all right? You know, we're the only social media platform that likes our creator. We write, we draw pictures about Tom. You don't see anyone drawing pictures of Jack Dorsey, all right? It just doesn't happen. Unless he's an NFT and they sell it for a bajillion poop coin or something, all right? Newgrounds is the place where you're going to develop that internal value system because you know what you're going to get you know <laughs> how fucking made me laugh. You know what you're gonna get on new grounds. You're gonna get friends. You're gonna get people that are gonna be like, hey man, that was fucking sick. You wanna hang out in my Discord? Oh dude, you should come over to the new grounds festival Discord and hang out with all these cool people all day. Oh hey man, you know, we should come to our little private server. Oh now now you have a friend group. Now you have new friends online. I I I will tell you that I went from someone that was a lurker on new grounds for I've probably been on new grounds for 13 years. And you want to know what happened? Uh, Stan Pie went into the, uh, at the time, the podcast server, the collaboration tab. Went, hey, anyone want to help me with art? And I went, oh, I'll do it. Now me and Stan are really good friends. Now I'm I'm friends with Anosi. I love Anosi. Go follow Anosi. Um, and I have friends now. I have a community. I have you guys. I have all of you guys in here. I love every single one of you in here. I really do. You know, Gur, Chroma. Neko, I never get to talk to Neko. Nine, we gotta talk more Neko. Fatso, love Fatso. Marbar, Blue Banana. You know, you guys are, and if I miss your name, I'm just not gonna keep listing everyone off. There's a lot of people in here, which I appreciate. All right, I love you guys. All right, and that's the community that we built because it is an internal value system. All right, if I was only wanting shit from you guys, I wouldn't be doing this here. I'd, I'd be selling my ebook to Oprah's uh, team and then I'd have her on the show and I would come up there with a, with a Steve Jobs turtleneck and I'd go, well, you see the artist, you know, I I'm really happy you asked that Oprah. Um, you know, the artist, I'm not, I'm not doing that shit. I'm sitting here in uh, fucking uh, a, a button up and gym shorts and I am talking to you guys because this is important and this is the right place to do it. All right. Now, before I go to my q and I'm going to talk about living the experience. I'm going to talk about living, practicing what you preach and why it's important. The reason why I was late today was because uh, I decided that I was going to run a 5K a day. Because I got really pissed and I went and I told myself, I, I've always wanted to run 5K. I've always, uh, where I live on Long Island, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of 5k races and I told myself I want to, I want to run, I want to be able to run a 5k eventually. I'm a big fat guy. You know, it's not easy for me. And yesterday I was like, you know what? I'm just going to run the treadmill till I can't run anymore. And then I hit the 5k mark and I was like, oh shit, I can actually, I can actually run a 5k already. I didn't know that. I was so held back from, oh, I have to go to a race and I have to sign up and uh, maybe I, to, I don't want, I don't, I don't know if people are going to appreciate or be, people are going to make fun of me, blah, 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 you know. I just didn't know if I could do it, but I went to the gym where no one's fucking looking. No one gives a shit about me uh, out there, obviously, because I'm just a person, random, random, random NPC in the gym, and I did it. 
And today, what happened was, I actually got in the gym on time, and I had enough time to run it, because I did it in about, like, 46, 45 minutes, which if you go on my Twitter, you'll see that. And after this, I'm going to post from today. I got to 2.5K, and I accidentally hit the stop on the fucking treadmill. And I was like, shit! And it stopped. I still ran that 2.5K. I still ran it. But I sat there, and I was like, damn it. I really wanted that picture. I want to take pictures. I want to prove. I want to have proof to myself that I can go back and scroll and say, you know what? I did that. And I really wanted that picture. So I restarted back from zero and I ran a whole 5K. I ran 7.5K today. That's why I was late. I ran a whole nother 5K. And if you go on my Twitter later, this is not me endorsing just because the only place you're going to see it. Uh, I'm going to post the picture up on there because I did it. I told myself I'm going to fucking do it and it was worth it. All right. Now, 7.5K is not a lot to some of you, but like I said, I'm a big, big fucking fatso, and I didn't know I could do it yesterday. Now I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going to keep doing it every single day, and I'm going to post it on my Twitter so you guys can see it. But that is living. It was purely internal. No one would have known if I fucked that up. No one would have known. You guys have no idea that I'm trying to do that, but I did it for myself. And you know what? I feel fucking awesome. I feel confident, and, 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 and I did it for me. But the only reason I bring it up is because it's obviously a part of this. All right? I practiced what I preached. All right? Do I got a Twitter? Uh, anyone got that Twitter link? It is just Annie Slug. Oh no, not Annie Sloth, my old one, uh, on Twitter. Um, but yeah. So now I am going to I'm going to say thank you for listening to my rambling, my crazy rambling. Um, I love you all, and thank you for your time, and thank you to Newgrounds Festivals for hosting me. I am now opening the floor up for Q and A. I am going to ask Stan. If you would let, like to do like a stage thing, or I'm just gonna like read panel questions, your call. Because I'm just gonna go start going through these questions. All right. Cool. Um, everyone, hop into panel questions if you have a question. I will answer as many as you guys would like. All right. So I'm gonna start with. Maya, love cookie. Hey, Maya. Hey, don't worry, this could be this window. I have an issue. But I have an issue of feeling like I don't post my stuff right after I make it. Um, I will be forgotten. I don't know if that makes sense, but I guess that's what I'm asking is how do you feel? How do you not feel like what you put? Hold on. I'm. <laughs> I got to read that again. I don't know if that makes sense, but I guess what I'm asking is how do you not feel like that when you put it away for a month? That is a part of the process. I don't want to sound like the um, the ex-Navy SEAL, like, you just got to fucking... You know, I don't want to sound like that guy. But there is a level of discomfort and a level of pain that comes with pain in a general sense, not a pain in, like, you're going to actually get, like, like when you put it in the folder, I'm just going to go for, like, a month and punch you in the face. Um, but... Uh, is there's gonna be a level of discomfort because you're so used to the instant gratification. You're you're gonna be like tweaking. You're gonna be like, oh, I want to post it so bad. All right, and that is that is just um um that's just what it's 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 gonna it's gonna happen. But what's gonna happen is when you push through it, you're going to learn that you don't even need that in the first place, and you're gonna start drawing more and more, and you're gonna go, you know what? While I'm doing this, why don't I work on that character that. I, uh, you know, uh, I, I have that one OC or that one story that I didn't really want to flesh out because I'm like, oh, it's going to take too much time and I'm not going to be able to post and, you know, it's going to take too much time of my day. Maybe I'm just going to work on that. You're going to start doing that shit, not because I'm, I'm saying you're going to do it because it's just, it's just going to happen, I promise you, because you're going to get bored. When you get bored, you start thinking, all right? So that is that is the advice that I have. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, but he's, uh, the one part, though, I don't want to forget that one part. Um, if I don't post my stuff right after I make it, I will be forgotten. Um, that is a feeling that I 100% relate to. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys, uh, always, I definitely have a internal insecurity about the legacy I will leave behind. Um, and that drives me every day and it drives me to anxious, uh, decisions that I end up burning myself out and I end up quitting. And I would, I would at one point go for most of the time, uh, go, Oh, I'm going to reset, and I'm going to restart, and I'm going to get that dopamine hit from restarting fresh, making a new thing. Um, 
and uh, that's um, that's that was my dopamine hit. Uh, but you just you just got to push through that. So I hope that's a satisfactory answer. Uh, TDW, one question that also could be answered later. Uh, your value is based on how your work is consumed. Out of curiosity, do you think that earlier bit relates uh, bit relates very much to the subjective theory of value? Um, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna. Sp I, I I can understand that. I was gonna look it up just to have you correct, but I I understand the the meaning of that. Um, your subjective subjective theory of value. Well, that is the different <laughs> the versions of value. Um, what do you what do you find valuable? So I'm gonna use words that are definitions, but people are a a cool benefit of being so pro human, being pro humanity, is that I like to look at you guys, and and I think you're funky and I think you're cool and I like to. I like to stare at you. I, I like to people watch. And I like to dig into your brains and your noggins and try to figure you out. It's a big reason why I like art. I, I think art is the answer. Like I said, the artists are the ambassadors of humanity. If I want to figure out hum humans better, I got to start consuming art. Um, and whether it be architecture, books, cooking, culture, so forth. Um, so there's a, lot, there's a lot of nuance to being a human being and a lot of subjective sense to what you consider valuable. You have to ask yourself... Are the things that I find valuable in my control or not? And things like a promotion, views, likes, those are outside your control. So you go, oh shit. Well, I'm not going to be happy because I'll never, I'll never get that many. You know, I probably won't get that many. So I shouldn't base my happiness on that. That's that, that, that's what I'm saying. Um, you know, it's it's if, if the things that you hold valuable are in your control or not. All right. Hope that answered your question. Mina, what advice would you give to a young person who is not given support and told they're weird in a place where they can't remove themselves because they're not a legal adult or not fi financially independent? All right. So, so do I. I'm, I'm wording, I'm figuring out how to word it uh, properly. The it is it is it is very hard to the, the the one the one downfall of living in a community is that you and you have to get older you start to see people's different perspectives different people's lives it's really hard to learn and accept the fact that you're one of those people that just didn't get the support in the current moment that uh, you felt you should have been given. Um, and this is not me saying that you uh, think you deserve something that you're not getting. You know, I, I deserve, I, I'm not saying that. Um, but I think you have to learn to trust your gut. And this is actually the the... The support part is actually a big reason of why I push for internal value systems. It is because at the end of the day, you have no control over how people are going to perceive and receive it. The I'm going to go actually real back to my po post here. Media is power and it is your voice. Do not limit it to how others receive it. I... Uh, if it is you or, or someone that maybe a friend that you're talking about, um, I have nothing but sympathy and empathy as someone that has gone through something similar um, or as I would assume has gone through something similar. I, can't, I don't know your exact situation or their exact situation. But the last sentence is very important, and it is something that through therapy, through uh, personal introspection, through uh, you know exploring yourself, that you'll learn to not limit how others – limit limit it your voice to how others receive it. Um, you're, it takes time, but what I think is important is that you're here. You're in a community that will foster that that weirdness. We're all weird. Newgrounds is the land of misfit toys. We're sitting here, and um, everyone knows uh, how Newgrounds is perceived online. And, and, be, and the reason why that is is because we let in everything by everyone. 
And it's very important that we do that because people that feel weird need a place too. And I would suggest sticking around new grounds and hanging around the right people. And if the people you're currently hanging around with don't support you, there is a whole website of other people that you can find. That is that is my answer. Good luck. And to anyone here, my DMs are always open. Seriously, I will answer you guys all day. All right? Um, I hope that answers your question. Uh, I'm going to go to Coolio Shooty Man. Go back to this, actually, this slide here. Um, I'm just going to have the new grounds up. Everyone knows it's a QA. Actually, no. That's for the bod. Um, uh, da -da. Seconding this, the fan... Oh, sorry. Like I said, everything I just said. Um, same thing. My DMs are open. Uh, that metal, going from sloth to slug, how slow can you possibly go? I can go pretty damn slow. I promise you that. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of slowing down, but if I keep running like the way I'm doing, I might not be slow anymore. Um, oh, cool. Coolio, shooty, a man, main. Uh, would you recommend YouTube over Twitch or vice versa? Doesn't relate to NG, though, so it's all good of you. No, no, I will definitely relate to, uh, answer this. Uh, I, oh, man. It depends on what you want. I would actually, a better answer for that is to go back to my winter session uh, panel, because I, I definitely talk about it more in depth. But for a quick answer right now, um, if you are trying to build a community that is very, like, interactive and you're interacting with them and it's very live in the moment, Twitch is better for that. Twitch just has a way better chat system and um, the different hosting, the, the different features on, on Twitch are, are better. I personally enjoy uh, keeping everything I do kind of in one place, um, or at least having a main spot for things to go. And the fact that YouTube has streaming and Twitch has streaming, um, but YouTube lets me archive uh, my VODs instantly. And like as soon as this is over, you're able to watch it. That's what I love. Twitch doesn't do that, um, or it doesn't do it as effectively. So I, I prefer YouTube because of that, um, but it's purely a preference thing. Either right now or kind of like, um, you know, it's just, it's a, pre but I would go back to my winter session when I, I talk about it more. Um, Sachiko Fox. Oh, hope that answers your question. Sachiko Fox. Besides deleting all your social media apps on your phone and limiting yourself from technology, within reason, of course, going outside, what are there other ways to keep yourself occupied and improve yourself besides working on your skills? I, and I know this is going to, might sound hypocritical because I am a large man, but understand there is nuance to this tummy. Um, I would highly recommend developing some kind of consistent uh, workout routine. Um, working out is is working out is literally it is a it is a internal battle, which will which you only keep up with it because of internal value because. The first day you go to the gym, you come home, you are beat. You might wake up sore the next morning. You wake up the next morning sore. You're like, fuck. You're going to look in the mirror. You're going to look exactly the same. But why do you do it? Because you got to be consistent. Now, you don't have to go back that same day, that next day. But keeping consistent and actually achieving that and achieving some kind of regiment with your body um, helps build that internal value system and looking good and feeling good, your body's going to start responding to you with positive chemicals and positive emotions, and it's going to help. So that is a big thing I recommend, just finding something that, so find something that you like first, and then actually dip into something you don't like. Like for me, I'm, I love swimming. Um, I kind of like weightlifting. I hate cardio. That's why I'm running 5Ks. I hate cardio. So I'm going to make sure I do cardio, because I got to do something I hate that hurts, um, it's not good on my my on my big old Buddha body, and I'm gonna have to push through it because I feel good, and that's why I am sitting here chilling because I feel great. All right, because I just did something that I that I that hurts and sucks, but I did it. I wanted to quit multiple times, but I kept going and I did it. All right, you're gonna want to look at your phone a million times during that detox, but when you don't look at your phone, you're gonna feel awesome. It's just it's it's gonna feel good. You're gonna feel like you didn't waste your day. All right. I hope that answers your question. Um, Mar Bardan. My life is on the line right now. If something happens before my projects can be done, how could said projects not go down with me? Work in a team. And that's that's what I would say. Work in a team. Um, it's like passing a torch. All right? That is that is the quick answer to that. Um, 
as long as you have a uh, comprehensive outline and a uh, a sacred text of this is what I want the project to be, dying wish. There you go. Hope that answers your question. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Do that in general, just in case there's nothing here. Um, nope. Oh, someone's. Let it go. Controversial. While you're typing it out, I'm actually going to elaborate. I'm actually going to uh, extrapolate on the uh, physical routine part. Um, this is where I need to. I need to be fully transparent. I you you. It's learning to fail and to learning to accept failure is a big part of learning and progressing. We talk about. I talk about that in the pro the procrastination lecture in the AU Mind um, lecture in uh, last Summerfest. Talk about procrastination, learning to fail, and being okay with failure because you learn from failure. Um, working out can be really hard for some people. And that you might actually have some um, physical limitations that might make working out even harder for you. Doing any physical activity with the intention of, of, of healing your body will give you the same result. It's not about losing weight. It's not about... Um, it's not about getting some physical result because even though that is important, you want to be healthy. Um, that also might have some, in, some subconscious external value system still lingering in there. I know some of it's important and it's good to want to feel good and it's good. It, it stuff's important. Like I said, it's not bad, but just getting a push up in a day or uh, an assisted push up or a crunch or uh, walking or doing a squat or just stretching, just stretching. Stretching is phenomenal. If you can do yoga, I suggest it. Yoga is the martial art you do against yourself. I love that quote. I forgot who said it. Um, but um, yoga is very good for you. Um, but that's the extrapolation. Let's go to this controversial one. Um, best way to network with big names like Oni, Psychic Pebbles, etc. Uh if you really, really want to that bad, just DM them or email them with your portfolio. I go, hey, I like what you do. If you have a position open, thanks. That's it. That is it. Um, and uh, it shouldn't be beyond that because there is a um, – I don't think I talked about parasocial relationships in my Winterfest. Stan, did I talk about parasocial relationships in my Winterfest? Yeah, I don't remember, but let me. I'm not, and I'm not saying Coolio shoot shooty Maine is is a um, a victim of parasocial relationships, but um, sometimes when people want to work with certain people that are famous, and I'm not saying you, I promise you, I'm not. I'm not using you as an example. I'm just saying this. You have to check. What's say You have to check your your value system. Really check why you want to do certain things. Um, do you want to work with them because you're fam They're famous because you like them, or because um, they f you feel they'll actually progress your art. And this is something, not progress your art externally, they'll go, hey, these are obviously the kinds of people that their art matches my art, their vibes seem to, uh, by, their, by their art match my vibe. I would love to have an opportunity to work with these people because they will, they will improve me as a person. Um, and that is the question you have to ask yourself. If you're honest with yourself... Um, which it probably will be that answer because they are just artists. They are just people. You have to remember that. They're just people. I know it says big names. They are people. The only thing you're contending for is that they might have a couple more people in their inbox than, you know, I would. You know what I mean? Um, uh, so that's the only difference. They're, they're just people. All right? Um, but, yeah. Okay. Is that is that everybody? I'll give it, I'll give it like, another, like, minute. So I can catch up with the delay. But yeah, man, what a what a what a thing this was, right? Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. I hope um like I said, this one was kind of straightforward. Um, I did ramble a lot. I apologize, but I do like to ramble. Um I like I like I like, I like to educate. Um and if you feel um that 
maybe I said something you disagree with and you want to talk about it, you don't want to talk about it on the stream, feel free to, to DM me. I'd love to talk to you. Um, if you have any extended questions you didn't feel comfortable asking on stream but you want to ask me in private, please DM me. If you just need a supportive word from someone that is a part of your community, please feel free to DM me. All right? I, uh... You, it's good to be weird. It's good to be weird because it's interesting and you challenge people. Um, it's not necessarily good to be, uh, not good, like there's some morality to it. I wouldn't suggest being antisocial, um, with negative connotations. Like don't be, um, you know, don't do negative things at people, uh, like, you know, uh, put them down or, um, you know be arrogant or things that aren't nice things. Um, but if you like to hyperfixate and you like to talk like, like I do, you think I don't, I, this is not a hyperfixation manifesting into content. Um, if you like to ramble, if you like to draw silly things, if you like to, if you just like weird shit, all right, what's a weird thing that I like I'm trying to think. I definitely like weird things. Um, hmm. I can't think of the top of my head because I don't think they're weird. But I'm sure if you talk to me long enough, um, <laughs> I, I definitely know some of you have talked to me outside of a professional, semi professional setting like this. I am definitely a weird guy. So, um, know that, uh, if you learn to love yourself and how you care about yourself, you'll learn to embrace that weirdness. And I think I will use that as my official sign off. Stan? Thank you so much, and I appreciate the time. Uh, I think everyone's I think everyone's got it out of their system. I don't, I don't think we really need a stage after this.